Hello my friends and welcome back. Today we're going to look at the TID Radio H8 Generation 2 again for a second time. I say second time because I already did one review on this radio before. Um, this is the Generation 2 GMRS TID Radio H8. Uh, positive little radio, nice radio. You can find the review. It's going to be probably in the description. I have a hard time linking them up here, so I'll just put it in the description underneath for the previous video. So what we're doing is we're taking a second look at this radio. Um, I kind of liked this radio the first time around. Again, this is uh, what appears to be the newer generation of radios, so it's offering a lot of features. Uh, things like USB-C charging, uh, direct connection so you don't have to use a cradle, a very nice colored screen which is very 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 descriptive you can really see everything very nicely on the screen. Um, very standard features it's going to be a K connect for programming and yes it is on chirp so you can get it from chirp push to talk two programmable buttons an additional programmable button on top the proverbial useless flashlight. Um, nice radio I liked it the first time around there have been plus and minus reviews on this radio most reviewers that I've seen it have liked it and said it was good but there seemed to be an issue with heat generating from the contacts back here on some of the earlier radios that came out now um, this was sent to me by TID radio this is the GMRS version of it so um, I measured it at GMRS on my Surecom SW33 Plus, and in GMRS, this thing transmits at 4.66 watts. Not bad power, it's supposed to be a 5 watt uh, GMRS radio, so it does that without any issues. However, this is, again, in the newer generation of radios, these are actually programmable. The firmware can be programmed on these so they can be upgraded which is a feature I think is should pretty much become standard on all these radios because there are constant changes so you don't want to keep changing your radios and fixing problems by getting a new radio it would be great to just go ahead and update the firmware and this one can be updated so another thing about this radio is again this is one of those radios that can be used as a ham radio, as a GMRS radio, uh, or an open radio for all frequencies. I will repeat and reiterate, I neither condone, nor condemn, nor endorse people that want to use radios in any which way they want. Please act responsibly and only transmit on frequencies that you're licensed to transmit on. Let's keep it fair and nice and that everybody can play so everybody can join our nice hobby. So now what happened is that TID Radio actually sent me a ham version of the radio. Again, in appearance these are exactly the same. There's no change. This is Generation 2. It's the same radio. Uh, again, it has the USB charging port underneath and it's on the battery. Uh, same same exact features on the radio itself it does have the programmable buttons two on the side one on top push to talk K cable programming on the side again the useless flashlight on top uh, I do like the fact that you can actually uh, change this from VFO to memory and AB buttons are all separate so it's kinda easy to maneuver around but one nice thing about these radios altogether is Bluetooth is built into these radios. You don't actually need the dongle to program them. So if you don't want to use your laptop or your computer, you can actually program this radio directly from your phone using their app. There have been some controversy on that as well. I'm not going to go into that. I reviewed the Bluetooth connector with the app. Uh, I will have a link in the description for that video and probably at the end of this video I'll have a link to that as well. Um, it's an interesting radio because this one came with new firmware and which seems to have cleared the problem with the heat emanating from these contacts back here. I don't seem to have that problem and some fellow reviewers have also noticed that with the new firmware that these radios come with it seems to have corrected the problem. I don't know why or how or if this is a different battery. 
I cannot attest to any of those things. However, that issue is not really a problem anymore. Now, here's some interesting facts and measurements that I came up with uh, when testing this radio. If you actually use this radio in GMRS band, so if you, if you lock it into GMRS frequencies only, this radio transmits at 5.25 watts, which is about right for GMRS. It's a 5 watt GMRS radio. However, this is also a 10 watt ham radio. So what happens? You turn this on to ham, or you open it to open frequencies, and it'll border on about 10 watts. So these will transmit at about 10 watts in ham, ham bands. But unfortunately, if you turn it into open frequencies, it'll also transmit at 9.56 watts on GMRS frequencies as well. Now on MERS frequencies, this thing transmits at 11.3 watts. Yes kind of high super it's great I mean you know excellent power for a VHF MERS I guess it's good enough what's amusing though is that these two radios have different firmwares so this has an older firmware this has a newer firmware this radio will transmit at over 10 watts so 10 or 11 watts in open frequencies this radio with the newer firmware only transmits at about 8 Point three to eight point eight watts. Kind of odd. I don't know why. In GMRS, this radio will only transmit at about eight point three one watts. Only I say only. It shouldn't. It should only be transmitting at five. But when you're in open mode or in ham mode, it'll go to eight point two one watts. If you use it on UHF or VHF ham bands and ham frequencies on this radio it'll do somewhere between 8.25 and 8.8 .8 watts and in MERS this will do about 8.67 whereas this one does 11.3 watts um, spurious emissions always an issue that keeps coming up it's always on a lot of reviews it is also on a lot of um, Facebook group uh, content and conversations does this radio have spurious emissions? According to some reviews, yes, it does. Now, again, I do not have a spectrum analyzer, so I cannot test that. And until I get one, I just have to go with whatever fellow reviewers are putting up there. And a lot of them are saying that there are some spurious emissions, although apparently the newer firmware is not as bad as the old firmware. So, again, Make up your own mind and uh, decide what you want to do. These are inexpensive radios. They come in at about probably $60 or so on Amazon. I will have affiliate links below. Affiliate links do not affect the price as far as you're concerned, but if you buy from those links, it does help the channel out a little bit. So um, this radio does not have air band. I wish it did. Um, a lot of people that have answered uh, my comments have left comments that they also wish it did because it's a nice radio. This is this is a pretty solid feeling radio. It's a heavier radio in the hand. It feels better than than just a cheapy radio. I'm not I'm not gonna refer to any brand name or so, but it it has a much much more solid feel in the hand. You feel like you have not quite a pro-grade radio, but it certainly is up there. It's like, uh, shall we call it a prosumer level? I don't know. Anyway, um, this is not heavy air band, and I will be putting up a vid soon. That's going to have a comparison of air bands between different radios that do receive air bands. That's going to be coming up soon. So if you want to be notified, um, just please subscribe, hit the bell, and that way you'll know when that video is up. It should be up soon. Okay, folks, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching.